Hello and welcome to Bible Enlightenment Truths. We are going to look at the fact that every believer is anointed. One of the mistakes that uh, new converts or un enlightened believers make is to think that somebody else is anointed and that person is supposed to pray or intercede or direct them in their lives. And that's why a lot of people go to prophets to see vision for them and for solution. In the New Testament times, we are not to go to prophets for any direction. The prophet is there to just confirm what God has already revealed to us. The prophets are not supposed to be giving us directions. So many of us made those mistakes where you reach out to the prophet before you do anything. You call on the prophet because you think that the prophet is the only one that is anointed that is called of God. Well, contrary to that is the fact that every believer is anointed. The split second that you got saved, that same split second, God anoints you for his work. Even though you don't feel it, even though you don't know, you are already anointed once you make Jesus the Lord of your life. So journey with me. Let us examine the scripture to see what God talks about in the anointing of believers. We are going to look at uh, first, um, we are going to look at Colossians chapter 1. We are going to read verse 26 to 27. Colossians chapter 1 verse 26 to 27. It says, even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Very remarkable passage of the scripture. See, this was the mystery that was hidden. In the Old Testament, folks, they didn't know. In the Old Testament, you can go to a prophet. Uh, that's why you don't go to a prophet without anything in your hand. You have to go to a prophet. A prophet will give you direction. A prophet will see vision for you. A prophet will guide you. I know the Bible talks, it said, by the hand of a prophet, God delivered and saved Israel from Egypt. But in the New Testament, it has changed. The anointing now resides in every believer for directions. But until you know this, you will be misled. You will be taken advantage of. It says in verse 26, even the mystery which had been hid from ages from the generation, but now has is, is made manifest to the saints. So the saints are those who are born again. Those who believe in Jesus are saints. So you are a saint on earth already. Once you are saved, you become a saint. So this is is made manifest to the saints. And what is this? In verse 27, it says, uh, the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles. So this is the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles. And I, what is that mystery? It's a Christ in you. Christ in you. It is a Christ in heaven. It's a Christ in you. Christ is the anointing that made Jesus the Messiah. When Jesus died, when he ascended to heaven, he left Christ with us. So right here on earth, every believer has Christ, the anointing. Christ is the anointing that made Jesus the Messiah. He left that for every believer. He now said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You see, Christ inside of you, every believer has this crisis inside every believer. So you don't need to be looking for somebody else's anointing. You don't need to be tapping into somebody else's anointing. You will fall into the hand of the occult. That's an error. You need to look inside of yourself and use the anointing that God has given to you because you are unique for a unique assignment that God has given to you. Let's take this one step further. We're going to read First John chapter 2. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abided in you. And ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Wow. What a remarkable passage in the scriptures. He said these things, this is the Holy Spirit through Apostle John telling us. He said these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. So once you're born again, a child of God, you don't know what you're doing, you'll be seduced into thinking that you are not anointed. Be thinking that you are just a servant. Somebody with some fake prophet will seduce you to make you think that you have to come to them for prayer. They have to intercede for you. They have to hear from God for you. That's why I keep hearing people say, God told me, God told me to tell you, God told me to tell you. You see, that is seduction. Because God can only send somebody to you once God has already revealed that message to you and you didn't hear it. So, some people have been seduced into giving their hard-earned money and be, be taken advantage of because they were seduced. They didn't know that it was seduction by these false entities. 
Now look at it. It not tells you. It says, but the anointing which you have received of him abiding in you. It said the anointing which you have received. It didn't say that the anointing that you are going to receive. It said you have already received it. The anointing in you is creating that awareness. It said the anointing which you have received. You need not any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you. So the anointing of God will teach you, will tell you things, will teach you the things of God, but you have to be aware of it. He said, it teaches you of all, all things. He said, all things, not some things. All. Wow. Glory to God. And he said, it's the truth. So what the anointing in you teaches you is the truth. Not when somebody comes to you and anoints you with oil and pour oil on your head to say they're anointing you. That is not how God anoints in the New Testament times. We are in the New Testament times. In the Old Testament, yes, you can anoint people with oil, pour oil on their head and rub oil on your face. You know, uh, until you come into this truth, you will be misled. He said, and, and, and it's no lie. And even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. So God wants every believer to an, abide in the anointing that he has given to us. By believing on Jesus and getting born again the Bible way. If you are not born again the Bible way, you can never be anointed. Yeah, people can pour oil on you, but that will be a departure from the truth. And if you don't abide in the truth, the devil will take advantage of you and anoint you for his use. That's why I see a lot of people, um, they are even more wicked, they are, they are scammers, because they are, not, they, are, they are depending on anointing from somebody else. Abide in him. You shall abide in the anointing that God has given to you. So what are we to do? Number one, how do you get this anointing? You can only be anointed once you are born again. If you are born again by believing that Jesus died for your sins, he was buried, he, he rose himself from the dead, now he's in heaven, and you put your faith on the blood that Jesus shed on the cross by believing that it is true that he died for all of your sins and say it and confessing it to him the Bible way. You know, when you look at Romans chapter 10, verse 10, it says, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So the ninth verse of Romans chapter 10 says, if, if you believe with your heart that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead for your justification, you shall be saved. That's how you get saved. It's as simple as that God has made it so simple. It's just that human beings have complicated it. So once you do that with a genuine repentant heart, that you believe that Jesus it's your Lord, that the blood that Jesus shed on the cross was enough. Once you say it to him privately or publicly, that split second, God anoints you. You may not be aware of it. You won't feel it, but you are anointed and it resides in you. So number one, get born again the Bible way. Number two, be aware that you are anointed. And the only way you can be aware is when you read the Bible and God tells you, you believe what God says over what somebody else tells you, making you feel that they are the one anointed. You have to come to them. So you have to be aware that you're anointed. And number three, you have to activate your anointing by your prayers and affirmation. You pray in the spirit. As you pray, you are activating your anointing and you affirm and declare that I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You keep declaring it over and over and over and over yourself. See, as you speak it, the faith is activated. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And number four, exercise your anointing by using it for yourself. Use the anointing for yourself first. Then use it for others. Use it for others, to help others, to make the world a better place. That's how you exercise your anointing. Then number five on my list here, feed your anointing with the word of God continuously. You have to continue to study the word of God, read it, and make affirmation. Appropriate the word of God to yourself. That's how you feed the anointing. As you do that, you will grow in your anointing. Glory to God. So if you are not anointed, all you need to do is come to Jesus today. Get born again. Once you're born again, split second, you become anointed. You didn't, don't need to depend on any other person's anointing. You don't need to tap into any other person's anointing. Your anointing is sufficient for you. But you can fellowship with other people, that other saints that are anointed, and do great work for the kingdom of God. I trust that this short fellowship has been a blessing to you. So go ahead, come to Jesus today. Get born again and get anointed. Anointing is not by oil. It's by the Holy Spirit that comes to live in you. That's why I say Christ in you is the hope of glory. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button, click the notification, and put your comment. And I'll see you again in another episode of Bible Enlightenment. Bye-bye for now.